All right, hey guys, what's up? Apple Fanatic here, and today I'll be doing a tutorial on the latest release of OS X operating system, aka 10.7, aka aka Lion. Um, February 26th, I believe, or the 25th, um, Apple released 10.7 Lion. Um, this is a developer beta, developer preview, not even developer beta yet. Um, this brings a lot of cool multi-touch gestures and a lot of cool iOS implementations to the OS X family. Um, so imagine an iPad, and it brings a lot of the iPad multi-touch gestures to the Mac OS X. Now, as far as, far as it, um, it goes for what I'm booting, I am dual booting Windows, I mean not Windows, um, OS X Snow Leopard and OS X Lion. Um, I have this on a smaller partition. This is not my main drive. Just thought I'd let you guys know. If you're interested, I'm going to start off the video by saying this so I don't have comments or if I don't forget. If you're interested, it's a $99 fee to activate your Mac OS X developer account. Um, if you want a cracked version, you can go on to the Pirate Bay and I'll put a link maybe in the description if I'm feeling generous to which will redirect you to a legit download link that's cracked. I don't recommend doing it. I'd pay $99 for this and i perfectly happy um you'll probably have the same issues with the beta getting up the pirate bay but you have the added knowledge that apple is kind of backing this a little more than they are just the cracked version all right so i'm going to take you through a couple steps um I'm not, a couple um couple um what am i looking for i'm going to let you i'm going to preview this software for you guys i'm going to show you some cool functionalities that i found along the way all right so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is the new About My Mac. About this Mac, rather. So you click on it and you have the normal menu, the 4 gigabytes. It gives you the quick specifications. You can click on this and it will give you the build and the serial number. Um, but if you hit More Info, this is where it changes and it makes it a lot more user friendly. For when you hit More Info, it will give you the system report, which is all this information that if you don't know what you're doing with a computer, this won't mean much to you. But even the simplest of computer users will understand what this means. It gives you the um, information. Oh, I am running. I call this startup disk windows. Don't ask me why. Um, gives you the build. Gives you the year your computer was made, when it was made, and the model. Gives you the processing speed, the RAM, and it gives you the serial number again. Then you can go over to display. It will tell you the built in the display, and if you have an external monitor connected, it will give you the specifications on that external monitor also. As for storage, if you have an external hard drive plugged in, as I do, or you have a flash drive, or you have an iPod that's been formatted to use as a hard drive, and then it will give you the, all the information for that, and it will also give you the information for your MacBook hard drive, um, and then obviously disks. And anytime if you want to open it up, you can hit Disk Utility and it will open up Disk Utility. You hit Memory and this will show you what is currently in your memory slots. I have two gigabyte, two um, sticks of two gigabyte, 1660 megahertz DDR3 RAM. This is what a MacBook can max out at. And battery, it gives you the specifications of the battery. So everything's good with the battery. You can go over support and this has not been added yet, or but if you need help, once Lion has been released, if you click on services and you want to, no, support, I'm sorry, you click on this, it won't open up now, but once Lion has released, these pages will be released also, and they will give you help and how-to guides for your Mac. Next thing I'm going to show you, um, I brought up this menu just so I could, so I don't forget what I'm doing, or not what I'm doing, but forget anything if I can show you. Um, so the Mac App Store, most of you have seen that. Nothing's really changed with it. I'll open it up just to show you guys real quick. Um, they haven't implemented full screen yet, but you know nothing's really changed. Um, what's else? Launchpad. Okay, so we'll go on Launchpad. Launchpad is basically the um, iOS functionality of the um, Springboard. More, more specifically, this is more catered to the iPad. The spacing of the iPad is similar, and I'll show you how to launch it. So um, if you don't have a Mac that has a multi-touch gesture, a multi-touch trackpad, you can simply click Launchpad and it will launch it. And as you can see, you will have the ability to click on your apps and make folders. Um, this is a bug in the so um, this is a bug in the folder making right now, 
where if you make a folder it works but a good portion of the time you go to rename it and it will crash launchpad and I've actually had it crash my computer once so I'm not gonna do that but it's very simple you just double click and you can then type the name and you can drag out if you don't want to have that utility anymore and yeah pretty much it so pretty sure it's crashed again Uh, bug. I don't know if this is still recording actually. All right, so um, recording. So as you saw, um, it crashed, and that was pretty bad. It froze my computer and everything. So like I said, there is bugs, but I'm gonna open it back up for you guys because I am a trooper. And if you have a multi-touch test, multi-touch um, trackpad, take your four fingers and slide um, as a pinching motion. So you take your um, middle finger, your pointer finger, and your index finger, and you can slide. Let me just do that again. Slide. And you can't see it, but just trust me on that. Um, and then with your two fingers on any keyboard, or if you want to use your mouse, I mean, or you want to use your keyboard, you can click the arrows. But with your two fingers on your trackpad, just slide across. And it really, it gives it, um, the multi touch is more refined. It's a lot more open. And it's, it's, I think it's a lot better than it was on previous models of it, such as Snow Leopard. So the next thing I'm going to show you, is full screen applications. Full screen applications is where Apple has really promoted itself. It's where Apple has said this is what it's gonna do and it, um, so far it's done it. Uh, Windows users are probably used to full screen applications but not nearly to this amount of full screen apps. They've had that uh, they've had the ability to full screen it but um, not to the extent that th I'll show you what I'm trying to talk I'm talking about. So currently, the only apps that can go full screen in the bed, the developer beta are built in um, Mac OS X apps. So Mail and Safari are currently the only two I've seen that can go full screen. I believe iCal can go full screen also. You'll know it can go full screen if you see that little button right there. And let's exit out of iCal. And we'll open up Safari. So we'll just click on Safari. Oops. Click on Safari. And okay. And we're just go to Google, and for some reason it's not letting me connect to the internet. But as you saw, it opened up there. Hell. Um, did my internet crash, or is it just a bug? Yeah, internet's crashed. Sorry about this, guys. All right, we're good. So I just had to reconnect. So we'll open it back up Safari, and as you see, we're now on. Um, so it's full screen, as you can see. It has uh, it gets rid of the dock, but if you scroll down, your dock will pop up, and if you scroll up, your your um, status bar will spot up up. But this is cool because it adds a page like effect for your Mac if you have a um, multi-touch gesture keyboard and I'm currently I am think this is the only keyboard I mean trackpad I think it's only for the keyboard the trackpad um, take your four take any four fingers and if you slide across you can slide it and obviously you see this is your widgets and you can slide from your full screen application so if you have mail so let's launch a couple full screen applications iCal and we'll go full screen on that and then we have mail and this is already full screen so I'll show you what I'm so we'll start over here here is your um, widgets menu and same thing for the widgets as usual just you can drag and drop like that um, I already have that um, take your four fingers slide across four fingers across again one more time one more time and now let's open up a couple pages so we'll go click that and we'll so I can show you the difference and and 
Now you have a couple search pages and what you're going to want to do if you want to go back before and on pre uh, other browsers you take your three fingers and you scroll like that. Um, like that. Okay. But with this I only had two fingers touched down at that point. With this it's a cool feature for Safari. I'm sure it's going to be built in eventually for other browsers. You take your two fingers and it takes a screenshot of their previous um, application or your previous, not application, your previous um, website. You just drag and you can see it kind of moves around. You can go this way. Um, so we'll go forward, back, keep going back. And you see, it's not loading it because it's taking a screenshot. So if you have like a, a YouTube video going, it's going to exit out because you're leaving the page. But you, you can scroll back and it will open up. All right, so that's the full screen apps. Um, next thing. Mission control. This was another thing Apple really um, talked about at the OS X launch of Leopard. I mean, Lion. Leopard, that's 2007. Um, so, the ability of mission control, it's a lot like, time we're at 11 minutes. It's a lot like um, Expose Day, except it's a lot better. Before with Expose, you could scroll up and you would make all your apps disappear. They just they'd leave. Um, but with this, uh, if you put your two, your four fingers, and scroll up, you can see that it offers every single app that's open. I mean, every single page that's open. And then let's open some other applications. All right. Let's open up a text pad. And I want to show you this thing with the text pad, text edit. This is pretty cool. It's called um, versions. So type in a couple of random texts. So you can do different, just trying to make it different so you can tell the difference. And then we'll drag this over here, this over here, this over here. All right, so you have a bunch of mess. Um, I don't know if your screen ever looks like this. Mine does occasionally. And you want to find one window. You just scroll up or you can hit your expose button at the top. And it will group all of your Mac, all of the programs running together. So as you saw, I have a um, open up that. I have one over here, one over here, and um, I text edit. And if you just hit your expose button or four finger scroll up, four finger flick for the multi gesture, you can scroll up, and as you can see it finds it and groups it together. There should be four. Yeah. One, two, three, four. So it's pretty cool. And you can tell the difference. And if you want to move it, you can just move it there. And you want to move it over here, you can move it. Um, I mean, move that. You can move them. You should be able to move them. As you saw, you can ar arrange it as you want to. And if you want to click on a particular page, you can open it up. And mission control is going to be more refined, less buggy. But I mean, for the feel of it, it's very nice, very uh, fast for a developer beta. So I can only imagine how much better it's going to get for a final version. And everything is in real time. So if you're watching a YouTube movie up here on Safari, you'll see the um, video going in the corner. And if you have it open up here, you'll see it going over there. So it's actually quite cool. And yeah, so those are the main features. Um, I covered two birds with one stone there. Let's open up. Oh no, where is my Google Chrome? Oh, I accidentally Google Chrome. All right, so I actually have a mission control there, and the, gest the gestures I've shown you, and the auto save. I really haven't been able to do that, but basically what it is is it, it will save your app when you open it up, and it will save it automatically when you close. Versions is what I showed you with the text edit. Resume is um. Say your computer force closes ever um, unexpectedly, or if you had to restart it for unknown versions and you forgot to save your work, it takes a quick. It will save it for you, and it will and open up all your applications. So say Safari crashed, um, or your computer crashed, and Safari open, Word open, iPhoto open, iTunes open, and you are in a specific spot for that, and your computer crashes or you lose power, or whatever happens, it will save it for you, and it will open up the applications that were running before. Which is really cool. Um, mail five is whole. It's a brand new redefined mail. Let me show you guys that. As you can see, it's very similar to um, the iPad version. 
you have this it's similar over here to the iPad version and um, mail four or whatever it was called where you had your inbox draft sent trash um, but now you have the ability to make this different sizes make this small make it bigger and up here you have more options as well so they've tried to make it they've really integrated iOS more specifically they've really integrated iPad iOS into your um, your OS X line and that's really pretty much it airdrop I haven't tested that but basically what it is it is a file sharing program that you can wirelessly share any file from a Mac to a Mac um, it, it supports airdrop obviously um, five, uh, I don't know what that is. I know that sounds bad, but I haven't tried it. I'll read it. Keeps all your data on your Mac secure with 128-bit data encryption. Lion server. Lion is now. You don't. There's not two different versions of Lion. Lion is one program or one OS that will act as a server, whether you want it to be a server or not. So I'm not saying it will ser be a server even if you don't want it to, but you don't have to go out and spend extra money on a um, server because or OS for the server because. Lion is now the server as well as a basic operating system. And yeah, that's pr pretty much it. Um, one thing I noticed is the multi touch gestures have changed. Um, before scrolling up, it's more feeling with the iPad now. This flicks to a screen before when you were um, going on the operating system and you were scrolling through Snow Leopard on your Magic Tech, your trackpad you would scroll down and the screen would go down. Now you scroll down and it goes up. So it's more like um, iOS. Um, guys, that's pretty much it. I've run really long now, 16 minutes. Hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you guys want my help, leave a comment or send me a private message and I will help you set it up. Like I said, you can get this for $99 off the developer account. Um, I recommend doing that. It's 99 bucks. I and mean, it sounds like a lot of money. But you you have Apple behind you, whereas if you go jack it from um, Pirate Bay or a BitTorrent website, you don't have that added protection of Apple. And yeah, it's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you're gonna install, I recommend don't install it over your your only OS. Partition your drive or put it in a different installation of hard drive because this is a beta developer. This is a developer beta. You don't want it to be your only operating system. So guys, pretty much it. Any questions? Like I said, ask. But for Apple fanatics, me saying peace and have fun playing with Leopard. Lion.